I am so, so, so excited because GPT-4 was just launched by OpenAI. Now, GPT-4 comes with incredible capabilities, like being able to take a notebook or a napkin, uh, draw a template for a website that you have envisioned in your head, take a picture of it, feed it into the AI model, tell it to produce this as an output in HTML and JavaScript, and it will. And that was one of the things that was actually showcased by OpenAI in their main product showcase live stream. I think that is absolutely incredible and it's absolutely revolutionary. Now there is other things that GPT-4 is great for and it will be implemented by so many industries in the world and so many companies in the world like Duolingo for making sure that the conversation that you're having is much more advanced and much more intellectual. Uh, it has been used by Stripe uh, for managing fraud and making sure that fraud detection is much more accurate. It has been used by the Khan Academy to provide you with a virtual tutor who should be able to answer most of your questions, even though there is no physical person present. It has also been implemented by Morgan Stanley and the government of Iceland to do other great things. But think about us as web developers. Think about programmers and coders. How can we implement this and take this further? So I'm going to talk about the little points that are very incredible, and then I'm going to tell you how you can actually start using GPT-4 yourself. So there is three main features that GPT-4 actually came up with. The first one was, like I said, being able to process images and feed images into the AI and come up with output. Now, how can we use this as developers? Well, first of all, if we do have an idea, we can actually sketch it on a napkin, put it into the open AI model and get some output as code. But we can even maybe take this further. If we do have mockups, mockups that are, for example, created in Figma, we're able to maybe take them, put them into the AI model and see how it performs. We can even take that a step further. What we can do is we can generate images with mid-journey, uh, amazing websites that perhaps are out of our imagination or a website that we would never imagine ourselves that are great, take those images, feed them into another AI and be able to produce actual code. Previously, when I was playing around with ChatGPT3, I was able to ask it for prompt inputs. However, it was always capped and I always had to reprompt it to get the full code. Now with GPT-4, that is no longer a problem. What it actually allows you to do is it creates a bigger contextual limit. So you're not limited to 3000 words anymore, but the limit is 25,000. So you can be sure that if you actually ask GPT-4 to create a website for you, it should be able to do that with no problem. The third and last great feature of GPT-4 is that it is much more creative and it can essentially almost think outside the box when it comes to creativity. I did a video previously, you can check it out here and I highly suggest you watch it, where I used ChatGPT3 to give it prompts to write me a piece of code in a library called p5.js, which is a creative JavaScript library for drawings. And I asked it to draw a few things for me and have a look at a short snippet here. Uh, code a tree and p5.js. Let's try that. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect much. I expected a little bit more, uh, for sure. <laughs> So as you can see, it didn't do that well. So I really want to put GPT-4 to the test. So make sure you subscribe to this video because I'll be releasing another one very, very soon uh, to show you a comparison of the same commands and see how much of an improvement there is and how much of a performance boost there is when it comes to thinking outside the box and producing these coding snippets. Now, when it comes to feeding the images in, well, unfortunately, I won't be able to test that just yet. And not many people will because in order to feed the images into GPT-4, you actually need to use the GPT-4 API. And that API is not available to everyone. You have to sign up to a waiting list to be able to use it. So, of course, I have done so. I am part of that waiting list. And as soon as I get access, you can expect an awesome video where I will physically attempt to paint a website in my notebook or on a napkin, where you can really test this, uh, take a picture of it and see what kind of content we produce. Then we can do a Figma template, then a mid journey, and we'll see the output. Now that you probably heard all of this, you're very excited and you want to go ahead and test it out yourself. Well, you can do so. If you go on the OpenAI website, you'll be able to subscribe to ChatGPT+. It's essentially a premium subscription that gives you the access to use GPT-4 and give it prompts 
and get some kind of output. It's a $20 a month subscription, uh, but I think it's definitely worth it. It's always nice to experiment with these new features and be familiar with them. Uh, I hope you got some quick insight into what GPT-4 offers. It's an extremely powerful OpenAI language model, and uh, I will see you in the next video when I actually put it to the test. I'll see you then.